as well. Uh, so hi everyone. Welcome to the MFR webinar series on renovation and home inspection uh, with our special guest, Enil from Key Home Inspections. Enil is a prominent member of the Ontario Association of Home Inspectors and a registered home inspector. Uh, he's also the founder and managing director of Key Home Inspections and is a committed professional building inspector and advisor for over 15 years. Uh, one thing I actually didn't know about you, Anil, is that you were uh, you worked alongside Mike Holmes uh, back in the day in the two was it two thousand nine to two thousand and fourteen. Yeah, six years, five years, six years. Okay, excellent. So uh, yeah, no, definitely uh, feel free to share any of those stories or experiences. I got a little plaque over here. Ah, oh, very nice. You got a lot of plaques there, so a lot of different awards and uh, certificates. I know you're. Yeah. Yeah, highly established there, which is uh, amazing. So really appreciate you uh, being here to, to help us with this uh, this webinar. And uh, people want to ask any, any questions, there's a chat box. Feel free to enter your questions in the chat box at any time and uh, ask any, any questions related to uh, renovations and home inspections. Um, so my name, is, as most of you know, is Paul Chen. I'm the founder of Modern Family Realtor. Uh, we're the number one team under the number one brokerage in Toronto uh, with over 5,000 agents. Uh, I actually just personally did my first renovation uh, just a couple months ago uh, to our bathroom. And uh, it, it was quite a process. Uh, so it was a unique experience. Uh, definitely uh, learned a lot in terms of going through it, uh, selecting the right contractors, uh, getting the right advice, design. Uh, home inspectors, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's such a big investment. So definitely take your time and try to find the best referrals because uh, they make such a big difference depending on who you work with. And uh, as you know, there are sometimes a little bit of delays in um, renovations. So make sure that you get ones that are reliable as well. Uh, so I'm going to now pass it on to my colleagues, Jordan and Teresa, uh, who are going to host uh, today's session for us. All right. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Welcome, Ennio, to today's webinar. Uh, so my name is Jordan Martin. I've been with uh, Paul and the team for the past year. Um, we have Teresa. Teresa, if you want to give a little intro. Uh, okay. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, I'm uh, also an agent uh, with the Modern Family team. Um, I've been with them for almost three years now, since the start of my real estate career. Um, my background is in public accounting, so I have a CA, a chartered accounting license as well, which I'm not practicing at the moment. Um, I specialize in resale properties for end users, uh, investors, and also first-time home buyers, most, mostly on the west end of the city. Wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. And then we have Anna as well. Anna? Thanks, Jordan. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna. I've been uh, with Paul and the team for a couple of months now, since uh, the winter of this year. Um, I also am a CPA, CA like Teresa. I, we actually worked together a couple of years ago. Um, currently, I'm practicing real estate. I've been a great move. Absolutely love it. And I specialize in resale and reconstruction uh, homes. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so how we're going to set up today's webinar is we are going to base the questions on home renovations and then we're going to go into home inspections. So they're two very key things, as Paul mentioned earlier. So renovations is when you purchase that property or your current property and you want to make a change to it, like a washroom or a bedroom, a kitchen, uh, and then an inspection. We typically do that when you want to purchase a property. So if you're looking to purchase something, you want to know what's the condition of the roof, what's the condition of the foundation wall. Uh, so the inspection is a really key thing and sometimes homes come with pre-inspections sometimes they don't and we're going to learn all about the difference between pre-home inspections and uh, the, the value of getting one before you actually purchase a property so thank you Ennio for coming out uh, we're going to start with the renovations so we have a series of questions we're all going to bounce around between the team and as Paul said if you have any questions yourself please put it in the chat and then we'll make sure that we address that as well so the very first question we have for you Ennio is do you require a permit when undertaking home renovations? Um, 
definitely when you're doing structural, any type of structural change to the house, you definitely need a permit. Uh, an actual, with city bylaws, removing any wall um, typically does require a permit. Just for the simple fact that the city, if you're, if you're commencing a renovation and a city inspector comes in and happens to check, he is unaware if that wall is a load bearing wall, structural wall or not. So he would stop you at that point in time for not having a permit to, to build or to do whatever renovation you're doing. Um, having said that, so you know, if you ever come across a situation where you start to do a renovation and a city inspector comes, happens to knock on your door, he's going to ask you for a permit um, because he doesn't know about that fact. So if you're not doing any type of load bearing walls, you still do require a permit. It's just that you do not require structural engineer drawings. So um, because typically you're going to remove walls, um, you're probably going to do some electrical work more than likely because there's always wiring within the walls. You definitely need a electrical permit to do any type of uh, wiring to a house, uh, relocating outlets, and switches, and putting in new pot lights and so on requires permits. As far as plumbing goes, that's a little different. If you're just doing a renovation of a washroom like Paul was doing earlier, um, you really don't need a permit for that. If you're just replacing a toilet, you're replacing a sink or a shower, doing a complete renovation to a shower or a washroom area, it does not require a permit. The only time you would require that if you start to relocate drains. So if you're moving your toilet for say, from one side of the bathroom to an opposite side, then you would require a permit because you're actually relocating drains. Okay? So if you're doing that kind of renovation, you would require the permit. Wonderful, thank you Anio. Um, so to follow up with that, if I'm going to undertake a renovation, is there an ideal time during the year to renovate? So if it's a condo or a house or a certain time to avoid? Um, I, I think that would depend on the type of renovation that you're doing. So if you're doing additions to your house or you're doing a top up to your house, um, if you're doing an addition, which would require foundations to be built, uh, then I would always recommend to have those foundations and footings um, dug and poured prior to uh, winter for freezing purposes and so on. Uh, generally speaking, I would say if you're doing that type of renovation and addition, then anything between the spring to the fall is, is a great time to do that type of work. Same as top ups and so on. If you're doing framing because you want to have the shell created, you want to have the roof up and you want to have the windows intact before the bad weather comes, before the winter months come in. So generally speaking, um, spring to fall is the best time to do any structural or uh, upright structures being built, additions and so on. But once that shell is created, any time of the year is fine. Great, wonderful, thank you. Uh, so now we have another question here for Teresa. Uh, do home renovations increase the house or condo values? Uh, what areas of a house should you focus on if you're intending to renovate? Okay. Definitely, definitely. Oh, sorry. Is that a question for me? I was, uh, for Teresa, but we can all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think Tim in the chat box had a question related to this. So hopefully this will help answer your question as well, Tim. Um, so I think when we think of, you know, what will, what can we do to sort of increase the value of a home? It really depends on, first of all, your intentions. You know, are you planning to do the renovations while still living there? or are you planning to just get it ready for sale? So the areas that I think most people tend to uh, think of is like, you know, the big ticket items such as washrooms, your kitchen, you know, finishing up your basement or, you know, the exterior of your home. So the curb appeal of it. Um, you know, how much time and money you should focus on those areas could be very different. So obviously if you're renovating to live there, you would want to do it to your specifications and your taste so that you'll be happy uh, and comfortable with the results. But if you're deciding to take on a project to you know, get the place ready to sell, um, 
personally, I think the best place to start is to really have that discussion with your realtor. Um, you know, your listing agent beforehand. You probably want to get an assessment as to uh, what your home is currently worth in its current state. Um, and then have a budget in mind, you know, how much are you planning or how much can you afford to put into the renovations? Um, and then, you know, get your agent to also uh, do an assessment of other comparable properties that are selling with more updated features. And um, I think that will be able, and then I, you would work, work backwards, obviously. Um, based on your budget, you would allocate it to the things that you think would be most important and based on your realtor's recommendations. Um, I think that is probably the best way to approach it because every house is different. You know, every condo is different. Its condition, its state is, is always different and the market timing as well. So you probably, uh, you know, don't want a lot of delays for big projects if there's it's a good time in the market to sell. So all those factors will will uh, come into play and uh, having that discussion ahead of time with your realtor will be able to get you the best results. But mainly I would focus on, you know, updating your kitchen. Um, you can either do a full gut or restructuring, opening up the space, or you can simply just update, you know, the countertops, backsplash, hardware, all those things um, will really make a big impact with a minimal cost. Um, you know, things like if the driveway is in bad shape, you'll probably want to spend a little bit of money just to get, you know, redo it. Um, it's at a minimal cost, but, you know, it, it gives off a good first impression of your home for, for buyers. Um, bathrooms, you know, if the house has a limited amount, a number of bathrooms to compare to the number of bedrooms or a living space. Uh, you pro instead of updating a current bathroom, you probably want to think about, you know, possibly adding an another bathroom to your home. So I think all those things in the end, uh, when you assess it on your individual case and your the, the, stat at the state of your house, um, it will really help you determine what how to best tackle it. Wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. If, if I can add something, if you don't mind, so if I can add something, uh, just to let you know, we have this little price guide that we put out. We give usually give it to people that are buying or renovate or selling or pre-sale listings, but I just want to give you some, some information. The bathroom, a bathroom renovation can increase the value by 64% on the renovation cost itself. So if you're washroom renovation is 20,000, the resale value would be $13,000 more. So it's a total of $40,000. That would be that your kitchen, if you're spending 23, you're up by, it's gonna bring you up by another 18,000. So the overall increase 77%. Your deck, if you're doing a deck, it's say $20,000 deck, the increase in value is 66% on that. So um, anyway, just, I have these, Paul, if you want them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, fantastic. I remember those in your packages. Uh, yeah. yeah, very valuable information. And I, we love percentages too. So uh, <laughs> we like to quote those numbers to our clients. And uh, yeah, they tend to do those works uh, on those some of those projects that you mentioned. Absolutely. Okay, thank you for adding that, Enio. And I think that addresses both Tim and Rosalind's question that we had in the chat. So thanks to everybody for answering that. Um, speaking of money in dollars and cents, the next question is for you, Paul. How much do home renovations cost and how should you budget for it? So from a client perspective and a realtor, from a client going to you and I want to buy a house, I'm asking you, how much is that washroom going to cost? Uh, Enio, I think in that price list, I think, did you have the cost as well, um, okay. potentially with the ranges. I remember seeing that in there as well. If you wanna maybe outline a couple of them. Well, uh, I don't remember them off heart, but. So a bathroom of a mid-sized bathroom, four piece bathroom, more or less, you're probably around $20,000, right? The increase in value would be another 13. So an increase of 64% on your investment of 24,000 or $20,000. Um, smaller bathroom, I, do not have that's a mid range so but the percentages will probably be the same right for the bathrooms again kitchens um what would you like to know i have a list here so. uh just the major ones yeah so kitchens flooring kitchen, uh if you're going for again like a mid-range type of kitchen um you're about 
23, uh, about 23,000 for a smaller kitchen. And you're up to about 65,000 for a larger kitchen. And those increases in value 77% on the mid range and 58% on the large kitchen is your return for your investment, right? Um, that conditions, uh, interesting one is, uh, is interior doors. A couple of thousand dollars upgrade your front door. Your increase in return is 68% average on that, and that investment. So put a new front door in, increases it quite a bit. Uh, window replacements, if you're saying around $20,000 for wood windows, uh, those are higher end windows, but if you're into vinyl windows, the average for an average size home, three bedroom house, bungalow type of thing, you're about 17,000, but your increase is 72% uh, return on that investment. So it's quite a bit. Uh, do you have uh, roofs or anything else on there? Roof, if you're up with asphalt shingle, roofs are very funny because the, the, the greater the steep of the roof, the more expensive the roof gets. Uh, but we've, we're taking just an average average roof is about $25,000, um, which would return about 65% on that investment. Uh, metal roofs are going for about $40,000 nowadays. Again, average house. Um, return on value is about 61%. Okay, I know flooring is popular. A lot of people are updating their flooring, especially in condos right now. Uh, do you have that one on there by any chance? Flooring. No, I don't have it on this one. This one here, I do not. Uh, I know it varies obviously by per square foot and depending on the quality, if you want laminate or hardwood. Um, there's a wide range, but I, I know that's a popular renovation. Uh, and of course, the last one, painting, uh, is probably the easiest one to do. We do recommend that pretty much for all of our listings that we have out there, because uh, it's low cost, high return. Uh, it just really brightens up the, uh, the place with a new fresh coat of paint, uh, especially if the old paint is like a darker color as well. Uh, it makes a huge difference, uh, especially when we stage it afterwards. Uh, it really kind of just makes the place more look like a model home. Uh, so thanks, Daniel, for sharing that. Um, also, costs also vary depending on the contractor. Uh, we can recommend and refer uh, a variety of contractors um, that work with the Modern Family Realtor team. Uh, some are more expensive than others. Um, so you also want to budget between that. And we always recommend interviewing at least two or three um, contractors and getting a quote before you select one. So definitely shop around because uh, um, we see in terms of the quality uh, and the costs vary widely across the industry. So make sure you do that. And if you need any recommendations, just ask our team uh, for, for ones that we've used in the past. Great. So Ennio, John has a question. He wants to know, how did you derive those numbers? When you say the average kitchen or the average washer or mid-size range, heck, how do you derive that? It's a, it's a national, it's a nationwide average from renovations that are being taken place. It's just a government website that we get the information from. Okay, excellent. Um, another question was, how much is the cost for a backsplash and granite countertops? So I actually went through this myself just a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, when I redid my kitchen. And I, I will be honest and say it really depends when it comes to backsplash, what material you pick. You can get a material that ranges from $5 a square foot to purchase up to $20, even more expensive than that. So I find backsplashes, you spend a lot more money on the material than you do the installation. Also, some backsplashes are on a mesh. So it's already, say you pick little mosaics, it's on a mesh, you just slap it on, that's much easier to lay as opposed to let's say a little uh, subway tile where you're laying each and every single one. So the price for that can really vary. So it could be a smaller kitchen, let's say $500 for the installation. And I can imagine it goes up to $1,500 depending on the complexity. And that I'd say, when I say smaller, I'm saying more like condo size. House, I'd probably say a couple thousand dollars to do it. And the same thing goes with granite countertops. So there's a variety of different styles out there. You think about stick, uh, thickness, think about the edging of the granite countertop as well. Um, 
all of those are different variables that you want to take into consideration, but you're definitely looking into the thousands when you talk about granite or quartz countertops. Another question that I'll answer as well is how long does it typically take to do a renovation from start to finish? So this is going to vary from project to project. So if you're talking about a renovation, and any of you can chime in on this too, but if you're talking about an extension at the back of your house, it's probably going to take you three to five months to complete that because of the foundation, which typically I would say takes the longest. Um, depending on the, the circumstance, if you're working in Toronto, if you have a very tight restricted site, getting excavation tools back there, sometimes you have to do it by hand, that can be very time consuming. Um, if it's something like a roof, I actually am getting a quote on a roof right now and they're saying that it takes a day to do from start to finish to do it. Uh, a kitchen, you're probably looking at two to three weeks. And the reason being, you have to take out your old kitchen, replace it with the new one. But once the new kitchen's in, they have to do some measurements for your countertop as well. And then they go back to the fabricator and they fabricate the countertop, do the cutouts. So you're probably looking at about a week for that, if not a little bit longer, and then your backsplash. So really, if it's a minor renovation, like roofing, or you want to do some painting, let's say one to two, maybe three days, getting into the heart of the home, the washroom, um, your kitchen, you're looking at a few weeks. And then if you're doing extensions, you're looking at months. Is probably the best way that I would explain and describe that. You agree with that, Ennio? Anything you want to add to that? Um, Permit. I, I mean, as far as, as, far as your kitchen, Permit. as far as the kitchen goes, I think from start to finish, you, typically the kitchen manufacturers require anywhere between, uh, depending on the detail of the kitchen, between four to eight weeks to actually produce the kitchen and have it on site. Um, that's the average length of time uh, to do that. If you're doing a full uh, gut and rental of the material of the house. Uh, I've done that many times for clients. Um, you're looking at, we can put them off in about three months, but typically average is four to five months to do a complete gut and a rental on a Scarborough bungalow type of thing, right? Or a downtown property, um, you know, we've done them down on uh, like in Leap Home. We've done them as fast as three months, but three to five is the average, I would say. And you're right, as far as um, accessibility to the home, definitely drives the cost up if you're not, if it does, if it's very difficult to have access to the rear yard or whatever it is that you're doing. Contractors will generally charge you more for that type of work, for sure, for sure. Windows, replacement of windows, doors, um, really it's, it's more the fact of waiting for the material to come, but the actual uh, replacement of windows or doors, if you're doing an entire house, may take you two days to do an entire house, depending on how many windows, obviously. But looking at a downtown property, you can do it in between one day to two days for all the windows. That's really great. Thank you, Enio. Another thing I'd add as well, if you're purchasing a new property and when you look at it with your realtor and you're like, you know what, this house needs a lot of work to it. Like maybe it has knob and tube when it needs to be replaced. Maybe the roofing has to be done and you really want to get that done in the first month or two when you move in. What I suggest doing is having good communication with your realtor because we might in that closing period might be 30, 60, 90 days. We can bring contractors in there because we have what's called a buyer visit and we can start lining up contractors. So maybe the second, third day after you get the keys, they can start working. But if you wait to the last minute to get a contractor in and you close in two days and you're like, oh, I want to get started next week. They're going to be like, I'm sorry, but you got to wait a month, two months, especially right now because of COVID. Um, so definitely plan ahead if, if it's a project and something you want to get done right away, work with your realtors, get your contractors in there, get some quotes, get them <laughs> scheduled in. And as soon as you get the keys, they can begin working. With that said, Anna, how many, if you have a client who's looking to do a renovation, how many people should they get quotes from, would you say? So I would say the golden rule, it's minimum three quotes. And um, usually that's what I do. And that's what I recommend uh, as well. Um, it's, it's the best one you can have multiple quotes. So you can kind of get a sense of, you know, what's reasonable, what's not. And I'll give an example. My parents recently did their roofing um, on their home and uh, they got five quotes and the two, three of them were pretty much in line. One of them was extremely low and one of them was extremely high. 
So they were they determined why the uh, extremely low was too low because they were new, not very experienced, and extremely high. They were just a bit unreasonable. So it gave them, um, you know, some comfort that the other three were were charging the market rates and they were reasonable and they had good experience. Um, the, their timing was good, so they decided to uh, choose one of those three uh, codes that were kind of in line. Um, so you know, it's very good to have multiple quotes so you can do an informed decision and the feel that you didn't overpay uh, and that you were able to secure somebody who could give you good quality. Great, thank you, Anna. Another thing I'd add to that too, if you don't know any contractors, there's a lot of resources out there. One, your realtors, like we know a lot of people who can do small little renovations such as painting and maybe some drywall work uh, to contractors that do like full kitchen renovations. There's a lot of resources online as well that some people have used like Homestars. They typically will tell you the ratings, give you reviews from, um, uh, from past customers of theirs as well. Uh, so definitely shop around, get as many quotes as you can, really put your contractor through an interview. So what are they going to do? So make sure everything aligns with everybody who gives you a quote and then pick the one that you're most comfortable with. Um, Any other question for you is, are all contractors required to provide a warranty and for how long is that warranty valid for? No, they're not, they're not required to provide you with the warranty. Materials typically have a warranty materials warranty is typically related to the installation of the product. Um, so it's a good idea to get warranties for the workmanship, but typically, no, they don't, they don't provide that high end and very good contractors will typically give you some form of a warranty. All right. So how does that, are you familiar with Terry on then? How does that work with a new build? Are you familiar with that? Yes. Um, Terry on is, completely different than a renovation or uh, tarion is more related to builders. Uh, every house that is built, um, even as far as infill homes in downtown Toronto, where they uh, tear the house down and rebuild again, um, sometimes uh, it's a tricky subject when it comes to those type of homes. Um, as long as you retain 30% of the building, it's not classified as a new home. So, but any house that has a new foundation uh, requires a carry on warranty that must be provided uh, by the builder to the homeowner. Um, but as far as carry on goes, uh, with most large builders, the Green Parks and Anatomies and so on in the world, uh, all of their homes must have a carry on warranty. The uh, purchaser buys the warranty and pays for it. And basically what it does is it provides uh, a form of protection for any type of deficiencies uh, which are within the home. Uh, Terion has their own uh, performance guideline book that's provided. You can, most people can obtain it if they'd like. Um, it has over four or 500 uh, defects that they would cover. Um, so basically you get a PDI inspection, which is a pre-delivery inspection you are allowed to go in and view the property and uh, identify any type of defects that you may not be happy with. Uh, those all get uh, noted in a Terion form that gets submitted to Terion. Um, you have a 30 day condition as well. Uh, within the first 30 days of new home ownership, you are allowed again to make a deficiency list if you have that and submit that to Terion. Uh, and then finally you have a one year deficiency list, um, and that's your final part of a carry-on warranty, your opportunity to uh, note any type of deficiencies again. So anything that hasn't happened in the first 30 days, but happens in six months or nine months, then they uh, can be noted on the year-end report to be submitted to carry-on. There's, there's two more stages. One is a two-year carry-on report, which covers all electrical, plumbing, um, HVAC systems, again, are all within a two-year warranty. After two years, you basically only have a structural warranty left on the property. Um, and that, um, that is for obvious structural defects within the house. All right, thank you, Ennio. And there was a question earlier, and I know you were to answer it, Ennio, and it was based on the type of floor, 
uh, that people use when renovating a house. So it really does depend on the location. You'll notice a lot of times when people do kitchens, they're gonna use like a tile, like a ceramic tile. In the entryway, ceramic tile, easier to clean. Think about in the winter time, you're tracking in salt. Um, depending on if you use like a hardwood or a different type of wood flooring, if water gets into it, it could start to swell a little bit as well. Um, so you do want to be very strategic about the material used. If it's a rental property, again, as well, uh, think about the longevity of the material. So yes, some material is more expensive than others, but typically when you see that price tag, it could also mean what's the longevity of it as well. So shop around, look at the reviews, be strategic and understand where the flooring is being placed. Uh, Rose has a question as well. And you know, this is a good one for you. So I'm living in an older home and there's an area that has a slight smell. It's clean daily but it can't seem to locate the odor. Uh, the issue has been going on for months. What should I do to re rectify or remedy the situation? Would you recommend an inspection to find what the cause is? Uh, well, I think, I think my first response to that, you know, I'd have to be, I would be asking uh, several questions as far as to where the smell is, the location of the house and so on to try to more or less pinpoint before to say if you know if you need an inspection or not. Uh, yes, I mean obviously an inspection would be more prudent in order to you know try to get to the fact while you're there. Um, there is no real way of just saying it's a particular item without really visiting the property. But in that situation, if that you know if she was wanted to call me, she could call me and I can we can discuss it on the phone and more determine. Um, where the smell is coming from, location of the house, I would have several questions to answer. And then from that, uh, I may be able to assist her just on the phone, but if not, I would have to come down personally to look at it. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and go from home renovations to home inspections. So Paul, um, question for you. What are the top three to five things you'd always ask during a home inspection? Uh, yeah, so that, that's a great question. Uh, home inspections are so key, uh, especially when you're buying uh, a new house or even an older condo, uh, because even us as realtors, uh, we can see everything on the, on the surface, but you really don't know behind the scenes what you're actually purchasing. Uh, so what I, what I discuss with my clients is really check kind of the main stuff. So that includes the roofing. Uh, the furnace, uh, the air conditioning, uh, the electrical, the foundation. Uh, these are more kind of the more expensive areas if you were to have any issues that we can help negotiate to help drive the price lower or get you some, uh, some money back on, on, the, on the price of the, the home if there are any kind of defects or anything that you will have to be doing in the short term. Um, so I recently got a, a home inspection for, for like my new property and uh, we had over 120 items on the list, which initially kind of scared us. Uh, but we know that good home inspectors uh, like NEO are going to really go dig deep into every little uh, nook and cranny in the house or condo and really kind of outline everything that needs to be addressed. Um, but there are a lot of minor stuff, so don't get too overwhelmed, but really, really check on the major stuff. So uh, we had, um, for myself, we had a, a few roofing issues. Um, we had a, a few electrical issues that we wanted to address, and we were able to negotiate that kind of off the, the price of the whole. Um, so we didn't care about the hundred kind of minor stuff that are kind of nice to have to do. Uh, we're going to take our time to do that over the next couple of years. Uh, but the major ones are uh, the, the five that I mentioned in terms of what you kind of want to look into and what, what may cost you uh, like five, ten, fifteen thousand uh, dollars $15,000, depending on uh, how old it is and, and what needs to be done, if it's fully replaced or just repaired. Uh, so really check on those five things I'd recommend. Great. And NEO, um, so what would you say if somebody comes to you and says, why should I even do a home inspection? Why is that important? And what's the difference between a condo versus a house? Well, um, if someone was to ask me if I should be doing an inspection, um, we're, we're a fairly reputable company. So we're not here to, to take advantage and just say, yes, you should do inspection. Um, you know, we have different levels of inspection. So 
you know, if you're looking into a new home, unfinished basement, say within the last, you know, 20 year old, 20 year old or younger, um, I don't think you need to be as intense on an inspection uh, for the simple reason that, especially if the basements are unfinished, you can save some money because there's a lot more visual things that we can see. So um, uh, you're a lot less prone to having a lot of issues with those types of homes. When the house is unfinished, that basically tells you that no one's really tampered with the house too much, right? But um, it's good to see the, the bones of the house and any other kinds of issues, but you would be paying less money for that type of an inspection. If you're going into an inspection that has uh, a base of an apartment and so on, and it's uh, built in Toronto, there's brick foundations and so on, there's a lot more things that you really need to pay attention to, the type of plumbing, the type of wiring, uh, you know, is, is it lead, lead service coming in? Is it galvanized piping in the house? Uh, does it have a Kitec with a lot of condominiums and so on? Um, so I think it's just when it comes to inspections, and I understand the marketplace is a very difficult thing right now to have those type of inspections. Um, there is inspections that we do for that type of uh, situation. Um, but um, yeah, as far as having the inspection, for sure. I think when it comes to an old property, you should have them. As far as uh, condos and compared to a house. Uh, condos really for myself, I'd say they're more um, cosmetic issues that would be taking place within a condominium. If you're looking at a condominium that's maybe uh, 30, 40, 50 years old and it's been renovated, those I would check because condominiums have uh, specific rules that are in place for types of plumbing, type of electrical work is done. Um, they also require most condominium inspections or most condominium renovations need permits that you must submit to the management because they want to know who's been in and who's done work to the unit because it's all part of the condo. Uh, but as far as the newer types of building downtown, we've done them. Uh, we try to look for uh, air leakage around the windows, uh, things of that nature, but it's a different type of inspection. Obviously, it's a lot less intense. You're checking the unit, not the structure of the building because we're not allowed to check those things in the building. So there's a huge difference between a condo and a house, for sure. Okay, and if I'm looking at a house and looking to buy something and I go look at my realtor, my realtor's like, oh, they have a pre-home inspection. What is the value of that? Like, what should we be looking for? Is it a full inspection report? So how valuable is a pre-inspection report? Uh, I, I believe that uh, touch a subject for me, but... Um, the only thing I can say about this pre-listing inspections report is make sure you read the entire report. You must read the entire report. You should not take the, the summary page as a complete report. It's my only advice that I can give you on pre-listing inspections. Our pre-listing inspections are a little different than what we do. I, we've done them for Paul, uh, but a lot of inspection reports, um, just read the entire report. So, Daniel, what are the differences, though, between a pre-inspection and an actual inspection that you do? Well, what's not included? Pre-inspections, <laughs> the way we do pre-inspections, uh, Teresa, is that we go into a home. So, for example, when Paul was, would call us to do a pre-listing inspection on his right. listings. We typically go in, uh, he, uh, I love Paul because he's, he's a much more particular than a lot of other agents out there. A lot of other agents will call us three days before the listing and say, come and do a pre-listing inspection. And then I come up with a list of things that have to be done. And now they don't have time to correct it, okay? Mm -hmm. With Paul at least, he called me two months ahead and said, I need a pre-listing inspection. I go in, I do the list and I say, Paul, here's your list of defects or things you should do. He corrects those, I go back, I verify them, or he sends me photos depending on the item. And we create a report that is legitimate, it's unbiased, it's, it's factual, uh, but at least those little minor things, or even if it was a major issue, at least are repaired and now you have a proper house to be sold. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
hope that answers the, the question for you. As I so sometimes ramble on so on. <laughs> no, no, it, it did. Yeah, I was just curious because I just want to know the difference in the work that's involved. You know, does a pre list mean there's less things that you look at? So there are things that could possibly be missed uh, compared to like, you know, a full inspection from a buyer's perspective and I whether we can more, rely on it. I really do think that all depends on the inspector. <laughs> Okay, good answer. And so, uh, how did how much does it cost any you know, for an inspection? Like, does it depend on the size of house? Uh, are there different types? It sounded earlier like you could do like an air quality assessment as well. So, um, what are the different types of home inspections, and like, what are the costs associated with it? I, I think the average cost in Toronto now is ranging for for. Experienced inspectors, right? I, I hate to say that, but, but there is a, a wide range of, in the field. Okay, um, you're looking at anywhere between 400, but I think the average uh, inspectors for the ex experienced guys, you're probably going to be between five to six hundred dollars for an inspection, and that would go up based on the size, and sometimes even the age of the property as well. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I know, Anna, how, if you had a client looking to list their house or purchasing a property, how would you go about selecting a, a home inspector? So how would you direct your clients? Like, what do you look for in a home inspector? Yeah, for sure. So first I would, um, you know, suggest uh, some of the home inspectors we are working with, for example, Enio, and um, we would provide them with background of Enio's experience, um, the quality of the work he does for us. But in general, when recommending uh, inspectors, you really want to understand how extensive is the experience. Uh, like Enio just mentioned, there is a wide range of uh, inspectors out there. You definitely want somebody who's experienced, who has the necessary knowledge Knowledge to provide you a good inspection. Um, you would also look at, um, you know, uh, would he be able to give you a good detailed report with pictures uh, that is clear and um, where you could clearly see all the issues um, that will be pointed out to you. You also want to understand how much they charge, uh, you know, are the fees reasonable? Uh, is it uh, based on the market? Uh, you'd also want to understand, especially right now due to the COVID, how soon can they do the inspection? Sometimes it can be time constrained and you would want to make sure that they can fit uh, the inspection within the time that um, it's needed. Great, thank you. Now, Ennio, what are some tips, like if you go do a home inspection for somebody, what are some like common tips you give the people to maintain their house? Um, we try to provide them as much uh, maintenance tips as possible um, you know so uh, obviously every house is different so going into a property our first and foremost is to try to educate the client as much as we can for the amount of time that we have uh, there at the property uh, but we'll focus on those things because a lot of people that are either they're first time buyers or they're coming out of condominiums and going into a house nowadays uh, they're not Prevy on those type of renovations that have to be done, or sorry, maintenance things that have to be taken care of. Um, that's our main focus when we come to dealing with the client. We want to educate them as much as possible. Um, but then, as far as looking in the property, is a different story. We, we, our, our biggest thing that we look for is, is water intrusion. Uh, into a home. That's, that's the first and number one thing that we try to look for. Uh, and I think it's very close tied in with electrical. Right? Uh, so electrical and water water intrusions of any sort are the, the two most uh, diligent things that we go after as far as that because they're the most safety concerns items. Okay, with that in mind, one question we sometimes get from clients is, what is a big deal breaker 
um, when it comes to a home inspection report. So I can answer that just from a little bit of experience. And I would say that it really depends on your client and what they're looking for. If you're looking for, if you have a client looking for a house and it's just going to be a complete gut job, well, they might have a little bit more flexibility in terms of the condition of the house, maybe the wiring, maybe it's all knob and tube. But if it's a project where it's a gut job and they want to completely gut the interior and turn it into, let's say, two different units, well, the chances are they're going to be redoing the electrical anyway. So they might be a little bit more flexible. If I have a client who's looking for a house that's $1.2 million dollars, and you look at a house and it's 1.9 right at the top of their budget and you look at the report and it says it needs a new furnace and that's going to be 8,000, a new roof that's going to be 10,000 and a new kitchen, okay, um, because it's all outdated and that's another 15,000 or 20,000, then it's probably going to be a deal breaker because now you need an extra thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 just to bring the house to where it needs to be for your client. Um, so I'd say the whole deal breaker thing does vary from client to client. Um, but that again is the value of a home inspection report, being able to look at it and know that you have knob and tube and it's going to cost you ten to $15,000 to replace it because your insurance company says, you know what, we don't want knob and tube in your house. We want it to be modernized. Um, another one, like Paul mentioned earlier, is the furnace and AC unit. You might go in and it might be nice and cool, but if you look and it says that the AC is 15 years old, well, the chances are, again, you're going to have to replace it sooner than later. And there's another potential five to $6,000. And know that all these mechanics of the house will change depending on the size of the house. So if you have a smaller house, uh, furnace AC, maybe $10,000, $12,000, a larger house could be upwards of $20,000. Again, that's why we have these experts such as Enio who will give us a home inspection report and even in case-to-case in -case scenarios, tell us, okay, this is the average cost of this uh, type of construction for a roof or a furnace and so forth. Um, but I'd say those are really uh, the deal breakers in that regard. Now, those are the questions that we had for the uh, webinar. Now we do have another 10 minutes. If anybody wants to throw in a few questions in the chat, Ennio, I don't know if you want to throw in anything, like any last and final comments to the group about home inspections or renovations? Um, yes, as far as renovations go, um, you know, we've, we've come across this quite a bit and I'm not uh, picking on any contractors per se, but uh, we do a lot of consultation services. So when uh, perhaps one of your clients or friends of somebody you know that are looking to do a renovation, um, it's pretty wise really to have a cons consultation time with someone like myself or someone who's qualified as an inspector goes as far as home inspectors go. And just talk to them and consult with them about possible renovations that you want to do to the house. Um, I know my company provides that service. We go in, we talk to the client to say what you want to do, and we give them different ideas. We try to open their eyes to different possibilities of either materials that you want to use or perhaps uh, energy energy efficiency products and so on. Really good contractors know all of this kind of stuff, but some don't. And sometimes people are going after price and so on. So if you're looking for that type of consultation service, and I think it's wise to do, um, you know, we can do that, if not us, somebody else that you have, but um, even inspecting the properties as the job progresses, we've done that as well. we we'll be hired as a consultant service. We go in and as the different stages of the project is going, we check to make sure, because if it doesn't require permits, as we discussed earlier in the show, um, you know, someone should be keeping an eye on how things are being done. Are they being done the proper way or not? Uh, you know, if we've been in situations where we've actually been in the middle between the contractor and the client, and there's an argument, we go in to resolve that situation to say, you know, what should be done, what shouldn't be done, and who's responsible for what. So I think it's a good idea to have those kind of thought talks if you're interested in a large flood in your entire basement, so to speak. You know, what do I do? What do I do for insulation? What do I, what, do I put spray foam? Do I not put spray foam? Do I waterproof? Do I not waterproof? Uh, you know, so many different things. And basement spaces are obviously a big, big thing in the city nowadays. You know, do I do a legal basement apartment? Do I just do a retrofit basement apartment? The, the differences are huge as far as those kind of things go. Um, 
So as far as the inspection side of things go, um, I really think that you can go on the Ontario Association of Home Inspectors um, uh, website where it lists all the different inspections. Um, our association um, really does have the, the highest level of education that's required in order to get a designation with our association. So you'll see there's designations with an RHI, uh, which is a registered home inspector, which myself, and then you'll have different levels of that. But then you'll come across people that say that they're certified home inspectors. So, you know, people get confused as far as which inspector do I use? What is his accreditations versus the other accreditations? Um, you know, um, this industry, uh, unfortunately, is an unregulated industry. Uh, Ontario government has passed bylaws uh, for uh, licensing and designation, but unfortunately, it's stuck uh, with COVID that came across and, and everything. Uh, it's stuck with the... Um, with the consumer affairs right now. So uh, it's, it's, it's in place, but unfortunately it's not in effect at this point in time. So you just have to be very careful about who you're getting out there and really check their credentials and, and talk to your friends and, and so on to figure out who you want to use. All right, thank you, Ennio. It's always been a pleasure working with you. Um, thank you so much for coming out. You shared a wealth of knowledge with everybody. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks to everybody else for coming out as well. I see some familiar names on the screen. Um, just so you know, this is our last webinar um, for a while. Um, so we had a series of them from, as we had today, home inspections, renovations, staging. We had Esti who's online with us now talking about mortgages. Um, so we had a, a long series of different webinars. We have some more fun and exciting things that will be taking place in the months to come. Um, so thank you for that. And if you have any questions for any of us, shoot us a, um, an email. Sorry about that. Send us an email or a phone call away. Always here to help everybody out. Uh, so thanks again, Ennio, for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ennio. Thanks, Ennio. Appreciate it. Take Bye. care. Bye, Esti. Bye-bye.